So the limit theorem was telling us about what happens at some specific time n, but where n is a long way into the future, as n tends to infinity. But we might also be interested in the kind of average behaviour over the long term, rather than at some specific point in time in the long term. So we might be interested in something like the long run proportion of time we spend in each state. We spend a quarter of our time in a certain state because we're there about one every one in four steps or something like that. So the word mathematicians use for things that are to do with the long run proportion of time or long run averages is the word ergodic. So in this subsection we're going to look at the long run proportion of time spent in each state and the ergodic theorem which tells us about it. Okay so Let's write down first the amount of time spent in a certain state. So, uh, amount of time in state J up to time, at, time capital N, let's say. And let's call that VJN. And so that's how many time steps N little n up to capital N, were there when we were in state J. Right, so that's just how many time steps n up to time capital N were we in state J. And then proportion of time is just going to be that divided by n, as in what percentage of the time were we in that state. So proportion of time is you know, Vj n over n, and we're interested in the limit as n tends to infinity because that will give us the long run proportion of time. So we're interested in what's the limit of Vjn over n, the long run proportion of time. And for that we have the ergodic theorem, the third important uh, theorem of this part of the course. So let xn be an irreducible Markov chain, as always, and we're not any in initial distribution. And what we have is this. The long-run proportion of time tends to this 1 over the uh, expected return time, again, that we saw in the limit theorem. And so, again, we can split into cases depending on whether we're positive recurrent, in which case that mu j is finite, or uh, is, uh, yes, finite, or the null recurrent transient case where that mu j is infinite, so its reciprocal is zero. So in particular, in the positive recurrent case, look what we've got showing up again. It's the unique stationary distribution tells us that limit. So the unique stationary distribution tells us what proportion of time we spend in that state. Whereas for null recurrent or transient, you know, we're either leaving or we're spreading out over a big infinite number of states. Yeah. So note that here we have two conditions. Right? It's irreducible and positive recurrent gives us this nice theorem to do with the stationary distribution. Note here that we don't require aperiodicity. The idea here is because we're kind of averaging over a long amount of time, this is kind of a long run average rather than a specific point in the future, uh, the periodic behaviour will just average out and isn't important. So here we don't need periodicity. Uh, again, there's an optional uh, proof of this in the... In the uh, in the notes that's non-examinable. Uh, so for example, um, if you remember the no claims discount Markov chain that we've uh, looked at before and that uh, also we looked at uh, in the examples that you'd have read in subsection 11.2, you'd have seen that uh, there's a unique stationary distribution uh, which was 130. 3 thirteenths, 9 thirteenths. So you saw that was stationary in uh, section 9, and, or was it section 10, I guess? And we've also seen that this is an equilibrium distribution in the previous subsection that you read yourself. And now we see we've got the kind of ergodic theorem of that this describes the long-run proportion of time. Uh, if you remember, these states corresponded to a 0% discount 25% discount and 50% discount. So that means over the long run, taking a long run average, 
one thirteenth percent of one thirteenth of the time we have a zero percent discount. Three thirteenths of the time have a twenty five percent discount, and nine thirteenths of the time we'll have a fifty percent discount. Uh, and if you calculate all that, I believe it comes to uh, uh, forty point four percent. So, kind of in the long run, over the history of an insurance policy, the insurance company can expect that their customer uh, will be receiving a discount of about forty percent in the long run, because that's the proportion of time they'll spend on each level of discount. Uh, another example that you'd have seen uh, in the previous subsection was this swapping Markov chain, where you have two states, and you always switch from one to the other. What a silly, silly Markov chain that is. But it was interesting because, although it had a unique stationary distribution, a half, a half, Uh, it didn't have that as a limit, as an equilibrium distribution, uh, because it is a periodic chain, not aperiodic. So it did have a stationary distribution. It didn't have an equilibrium distribution. But again, this ergodic theorem uh, does apply because the ergodic theorem doesn't need aperiodicity. Note this is, so this is the obvious fact that if you run this for a long, long time, spend half your time in state 0 and half the time in state 1. Uh, so that's 50% uh, of time in either state in the long run. Obviously, uh, if you've done an odd number of steps, you'll be one more in one more, one more time step in one than the other. Uh, but that extra one doesn't matter in the long run. And so you'll have spent 50% of the time in either state. So that's an example of where we do have a stationary distribution, we don't have an equilibrium distribution, and we do have an ergodic result on the long run proportion of time. At this point, you can either say that you've finished this first part of the course on discrete time Markov chains. Alternatively, there are the non-examinable proofs if you want to go through and read those.